Let's go. And we will sing. Oh. special one for that matter the first Sunday after Christmas and it also happens to be Boxing Day everything rolled into one it's a beautiful day and I'm sure you enjoyed your Christmas yesterday we are still in Christmas season and this is your life boy today and for your life boy today we are telling you that you can behold his glory you can behold his glory let's find out how you can do that Let's go to the gospel, the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, as recorded by St. John in chapter 1. And we are starting our reading today from the 14th verse. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. John bare witness of him and cried, saying, this was he of whom I spake. He that cometh after me is preferred before me, for he was before me. And of his fullness have all we received, and grace for grace. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. No man had seen God at any time, the only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, he had declared him. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise to Christ our Lord. Yes, no one had seen God at any point in time. The nearest to that experience was in Exodus when God showed his backside to Moses but told him in clear terms in Exodus 33, 20, that there was no way anybody would see his face. And in fact, for the rest of the children of Israel, he led them by a pillar of cloud during the day, led them by a pillar of fire during the night, but never did he actually manifest himself, not as much as the way he ever did to Moses, did he do to any other human being. And that's why Moses was able to remind them in Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 12, that God did not show himself to the rest of the people of Israel as much as he showed himself to him, just showing him his backside and never his face. But in spite of that, and in spite of other accounts in the scriptures that will let you know that no one ever saw the face of God, you see that, Again, in First John chapter 4, verse 17, you see that there too. And everywhere talking about not seeing the face of God did not say that you could not behold the glory of God because that whole glory was also all about Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And that was why at his birth, there was no other recording of such a birth in history that we have ever come across that the star shone so much and led wise men from a far eastern country to come all the way crossing so many other countries to come all the way to israel and to look for where the child was born and that was glory in itself 
What about the immaculate birth? That was glory in itself. What about, I mean, immaculate conception without a man, a woman getting pregnant by virtue of the infilling of the Holy Spirit. That was one glory. And everywhere that Jesus went, that glory was all around him because he went about doing good, healing all manners of diseases for God was with him and that glory of God was so much upon his life that it radiated to the extent that even those that had issues of blood could touch the helm of his garment and get healed. To the extent that even after he had left, that glory continued with his disciples that the shadow of Peter just passing by, can you imagine, healed people. And that handkerchiefs that came out of the pockets or the hands of Paul the Apostle could also heal people. That is beholding his glory, the glory of God through those who are his apostles, through those who are disciples of Jesus Christ. And then you could imagine what it was about Jesus Christ himself. And you know, each time that I ponder about the fact that John the Baptist said Jesus came and was preferred before him and was greater than him and had more glory than him, then that glory must have been great because John the Baptist himself was not just an ordinary prophet. He was an extraordinary prophet of God to the extent that even when Jesus Christ himself came and had already started his ministry and the Pharisees and the scribes were wondering who Jesus was at a point in time, they were wondering and asked him, could you be John the Baptist? Because that glory was so much all around him. But, you know, John the Baptist himself had told the truth that Jesus Christ was greater than him and Jesus Christ being greater than John the Baptist was almost mistaken for John the Baptist because John the Baptist was such a great man. And can you imagine as great as John the Baptist was, the scriptures also made us to understand that the first two disciples of Jesus Christ, Andrew and his brother Peter, were actually originally disciples of John the Baptist. It was when John told them, Behold the Lamb of God. And, you know, they just recognized that immediately. They saw the glory. They admired the glory. They recognized the glory. And, well, sorry, they decamped from following John the Baptist and started to follow Jesus because they wanted to behold greater glory than they were beholding being with John the Baptist. You can also behold his glory. And if you want to behold his glory, then you have to act like Andrew. And that you start following Jesus Christ, our Lord, and our Savior. And this is a very good season to do that so that you can behold more of the glory. The interesting thing is I was at a gathering and we were sharing experiences about Christmas season as young children. And one thing struck me about virtually every testimony. Everybody saw the Christmas season as a season of light and lightings and brightness and glory. So you can behold his glory beyond what you see of Christmas lights and everything. You can behold his glory in, in your life, taking over your life, overwhelming your situation and making things to get better for you by the day. You can behold his glory. And if you are ready to behold that glory, because some of us are already beholding the glory because we are radiating in the glory of Jesus Christ. You want to join us? You want to behold his glory too? All you need to do is give your life to Christ. And if you are ready for that experience right now, let me lead you along that path that some of us also took at one point in time or the other. And it's been more glorious for us by the day since then. So, say this prayer after me now. Say, Lord Jesus... I want to behold your glory. Therefore, I ask that you forgive me of my sinful past. Rewrite my story. Let me begin to follow you from today so that I can behold your glory every day in the mighty name of Jesus. So if you said that prayer, congratulations. Welcome to the kingdom. And for all of us together now, let's say, Father, open my eyes that I may behold more of your glory by the day and be transformed more 
and be likened more to Christ, I pray in Jesus' name. So go out today, recognize that you can behold the glory of God, and if you just gave your life to Christ as you go out today, look for a Bible-believing Bible church that you can always get to know more how you can behold the glory of the Lord. And if you find an Anglican church close to you, fantastic idea. Just walk in there. And if you happen to be in Oshobo, where I live, where I'm minister in charge, priest in charge of the Anglican Church of Okia State Extension of Oshobo, then come and join us and you'll behold his glory by the day. God bless you. I judge you faithful. I call you faithful.